Hi, it's Roy here, I think. Uh, it's Garb August, day 568, and I'm still hanging in there, just nearly finished, but I kind of, um, I don't know, the, the toxic runoff from the, the landfill of trash is beginning to get to me, I think. Anyway, final week. Novelizations is one of the weekly prompts. It's Garb August. It's a. It's something to do with criminology, and the details are in the thing, and you know. Uh, so, no, just fun in with you. It's all great. Novelizations. Uh, I've been reading the novelization of Enter the Dragon. Kung Fu movie from 1973 starring Bruce Lee and actually a reread because I read this book when it came out so way back then early 70s I was like mad on martial arts as was the whole world well not the whole world lots of people liked the, the Kung Fu type stuff so I think for me I'd never heard of it until the David Carradine TV series appeared, Kung Fu, where he's a David Carradine's this wandering, wandering monk in the Old West. And just the idea that a sort of a quiet, spiritual, non-violent guy could nevertheless overcome all sorts of opponents, uh, that was just great. And... It became a bit of a craze. There was other stuff. I'm not sure about the order and the sequence, but Marvel Comics had Master of Kung Fu, which we got in our British reprints. Uh, there was another uh, another show on the TV called The Water Margin. Uh, but movies like Enter the Dragon, you, as kids, we couldn't see them because of their certification. And there were no videos or anything. So, uh, so Enter the Novelization important stuff so for my 30p got a wild ride of a sort of recreation of the movie which I remember enjoying and probably rereading loads of times um, so that's great so enter the dragon kung fu killers on the loose now an action-packed film starring Bruce Lee I love that now on novelization sort of making it sound as if it's got the credibility of being a pre-existing book that's been turned into a movie by Mike Root so if you wonder who Mike Root is yeah, maybe it's some novelization kind of guy or maybe a sort of martial arts kind of guy a um, bit of googling find a really interesting article on Den of Geek uh, which reveals that the the actual author is a woman called Leonore Fleischer who sounds like quite a woman certainly as a writer did lots and lots of novelizations of all sorts of properties was really good at it a lot of them were bestsellers seems odd you know they were such a big deal but I guess when it was the only way you could relive the movie or or sort of access the movie if you weren't allowed to see it you know that that would make um, make a pretty good proposition um, the, the article about Leonore Fleischer says that back in these sort of days her her working practice to be productive because you know quick turnaround was an important part of it because they I guess the script had to be pretty much finalized but they also wanted to get the book out to coincide with the film so these were crushing deadlines now it could be a good tip this for your sort of author tube people apparently she would start start off on a Friday by taking a load of amphetamines and then by Monday she would keel over with a finished manuscript so interesting practice um, I wonder if she was kind of telling a bit of a story there but it's a, but it's such a lovely story Anyway, Leonore Fleischer, writing and not having seen the film, she says she was lucky to see stills um, and she's got to make the got to make the most of it to uh, to produce a book, not knowing anything about martial arts either. 
So taking all of that into account, it's fantastic. Uh, you know, given that the, the the story of the movie is pretty straightforward, it's a kind of bit of a revenge story, but also infiltrate a supervillain's island. And then there's a big fight with fights along the way. So builds up to an even bigger fight. Um, again, you know, I loved all this stuff, as I've said. As I remember, as well as this book, there are also things like magazines with pin-ups of Bruce Lee, like fold-out posters, that kind of thing that I used to get. Um, at school, in games, being useless at sport for the obligatory afternoon of sport, um, some of us were put in, I think it was called Box 4, so the lowest tier of the football the football practice teams for which was you know basically a bunch of no hopers where I was often in goal and to this day my fellow pupils remember me attempting to intercept incoming balls with a flying kung fu kick that rarely connected with the football so uh, good influence for for a growing young chap um, yeah so Lee is recruited by British intelligence to infiltrate a martial arts tournament on the island of um, Han, a pretty much a textbook super baddie who does does all the evil things over in uh, over in Hong Kong territories. Um, there's a couple of other goodies as well. There's a black guy called Williams, and there's a American guy called Roper and uh, they sort of form um, form al allies over over there in this in this island it's, it's all you know it's exotic sort of stuff which I would have ignored at the time that probably would warm the cockles of the the chilly English man in the 1970s the dreary de days of strikes and three-day weeks reading about banquets and water beds and mirrored ceilings and um, endless kung fu battles could have been quite fun uh, what else happens well i'll tell you what han super villain he ends up in the climactic battle with 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 lee and um Han, because, you know, you can't really be a baddie without some kind of unusual physical characteristic. So he has only one hand, but he's also got a museum of torture implements. So he will, for the, <laughs> he will don a, things like a, a bear paw or a, a hand of blades for, for the fighting. Um, so that's awesome. Now, as an old person, um... I spend a lot of my time bemoaning the fact that packages these days are so difficult to get into. Uh, my solution is to buy so many pairs of scissors that our house looks like a sort of a, an art installation on the theme of scissors because there are scissors everywhere. So I kind of envy the blade hand thing for opening, opening various overpackaged parcels. But this is 1973, nobody cared about that. There's Kung Fu battles and right has to prevail. I didn't actually remember much about it apart from the thing of plunging people plunging fists into gravel to sort of harden them up, which I would have tried at the time, of course. And um, again, Lee, a bit like the David Carradine character in Kung Fu, he's kind of got a bit of a spiritual vibe as well. And there's some sort of added added mystical woo-woo to make it all seem great um, plus great hair so enter the dragon book very good hooray for Leonor Fleischer that's my nearly there got a couple more books to read in the last the, the dying dying hours of Garb August 3D okay back soon with something else